I'm really dedicated to the show. I, I guess you probably get that feeling. And I've only once missed a live show, and that was when there was a blizzard. The whole county got shut down legally. I couldn't get the performers here anyhow. Even the time I broke my ankle. I broke my ankle on a Saturday night, and by gosh, Sunday, I came into the show on crutches to the applause of everybody who was present. I know I was pretty drugged, and I'm told I was pretty weird, but I was there. Throw your worries out the window, at least for just one day. Let's put off what we'll put off till tomorrow anyway. Small Potatoes, our guest this Sunday night from 8 to 11, WVBR is Bound for Glory, broadcast live from the cafe at Annabelle Taylor Hall at Cornell. Small Potatoes. The two of us are too scared, we'll stop and swing and sway. Later on, we'll slow it down, walls and night away. Small Potatoes, wonderful, eclectic new folk duo in from Illinois, winners of the second annual Best to Bound for Glory Award. Free admission for you and your friends in the live audience. Three sets this Sunday night, 8 30, 9 30, 10 30. Bound for Glory live with Small Potatoes. For the first of three sets, our old friend Small Potatoes. <laughs> Forty-five years started in 1967 and started the weekly shows um, live from what's now the cafe in in September of '69. So the show is more or less you would recognize it if you if you if you'd been there in, in September of '69 and and again here in say September of 2011 or so you'd say same deal minor changes. When I came to Ithaca, I'd already done some live music on the radio as a college undergrad. I came here as a grad student and made a beeline for the radio station and got on the air much more quickly than one could do that nowadays. I had done several small festivals live at what's now the cafe at Annabelle Taylor Hall. It was called the Commons Coffee House back then. And it had gone over very, very well. And the program director, of the of the time, then challenged me and said, "said Why don't you go live from the Commons Coffee House every single Sunday? I'll let you keep your time slot." I assume he thought I couldn't do it. He was wrong. I did it. I never stopped. <laughs> For years, people try to, they try to tell you, you must play better when you make more money. Don't you? Don't you put more into it when you're making more money? They don't pay us anything. And we have more fun, and I think we put more heart into it here than most places we play. It's got nothing to do with money. The audiences are to die for. These guys have just done this a long time. Uh, they, they're a professional audience. They come to have fun. These guys, they're just already there. They're already happening. Um, you, you, they're with you. They're with, they're with you. you. Yeah, they're just, and uh, just... if that's worth going. I love not only to hear the music, but I love to hear people, um, artists that I really enjoy 15 feet away from me. And one of the things that you know about a Bound for Glory audience is that they always sing. Uh, it's notorious because we've had actually performers that come in and they wrote a song literally on the way in and they're like singing the song for the first time. And by the, sec by the second chorus, everybody's singing. I was like, you don't even know this song. Every day, hope is the ground we Folk music is an experiential, it's a, a folk process where it's participatory. Please welcome for set number one of three for his 25th visit to Bound for Glory. For the first of three sets, Bill Staines. <laughs> Rock for 
here. Come spend a Sunday evening with friends. It is a place that often I find a performer coming and it's not a question of the technical side or the performance, but all of a sudden there is this connection between the performer and the audience that gets to a place that's bigger than what a performer can do in a recording studio or anything like that. Over the years, some of the performers, like Bill Staines, this is one of his favorite audiences. There was a time once where he got up for the very first number and he sang the verse and didn't sing the chorus because the whole audience sang it without him prompting at all. Everybody knew it. And so it was a, a joyful experience. Phil's a folky, and and you know, and he knows traditional music, and uh, and he loves it uh, the same way that I do. The real folk music is um, uh, something that's bigger than any one person, you know. And and Phil is really uh, an example of of somebody who understands that. No coyotes cry so Well, it's the longest running show of this nature. I mean, I, I'm also a fan of Prairie Home Companion, but he, you know, Phil's got Garrison Keillor beat, maybe he not written any many books, but he sure has got a beat in terms of consistency and consistently putting out live, local, or what do you want to call it, homegrown music, not necessarily local. I know that it's been hard for Phil at times with various changes and administrations and politics and whatever it may be, but, uh, but I mean, just to wade through all of that stuff, it just uh, connotes a, an incredible amount of dedication and, and, uh, and, and love for, for what he does. Hello everybody, Phil Shapiro here, WVBR Bound for Glory, folk music on your radio. Sunday nights from 8 to 11. I sell ads for WVBR radio. I'm retirement age. Uh, I, on some level, should stop selling ads, get out, let somebody else sell the ads. I never did finish my doctorate. It's not necessarily what I should have done with my life, but it is what I did with my life. Before I tell you what's happened, there's 15 CDs over there. I know you don't have them all. <laughs> uh, Bill's essentially the producer of the show. so. He has overall say of, of, about everything. He participates as we're doing sound check, as I'm adjusting for the stage sound that fills in the back of the room. And it's kind of a conversation we have as we get the sound geared up for the show. There's a lot of bass sound in the house. Um, He's got a really good ear and provides real good direction on that. He's a very regimented individual. He's on to himself completely about it. You know, he's got this list that goes on forever, checklist, has to hit every point, though he knows we've done this a dozen times, and, and he's laughing at himself, but it's just the way he it is. Makes, and yeah, it works for him. And we're like, yeah. no, no, Phil, it wouldn't be the right experience <laughs> if you didn't do this. Please, please get the list out. He has, he has a very large presence. I remember I was helping like coil up the wires after one of the folk song concerts and like I don't know anything about coiling up wires. I was just like wrapping them around. And he's trying to explain to me like the proper way of coiling wires. It was just like forward and reverse. And I was like, what what is going on? I'm just like trying to clean up. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> and then then like I came went home and tried to use my dad's extension cord and it was like totally tangled. It's like, what did Phil tell me about coiling wires? Uh, Phil is always very encouraging to the young people, like, you know, what do you want to hear and encouraging people to sing along. I just, I have developed a great respect for him. Past winner of Best Mountain Glory Award. I thought he was a loony. 
Um, uh, you know, he's trying to, this is back in the mid 70s. Uh, my brother and I uh, played the, the radio show and, um, you know, it was kind of a wasteland out there. The disco was really sort of taking over the world and, and there was nowhere really to play. And Phil was sort of carrying this, this torch of folk music and traditional folk music and singer-songwriters and, and uh, people would come in and they'd have a place to play and be heard and it would kind of get dispersed out into the world and essentially, you know, you get a little bit of exposure. Um, but we thought he was crazy and uh, that really hasn't changed. Racing pulse beneath your fingertips As the street shy plants and low whispered words of mouth blossoming beneath your lips and that's a simple kiss Nothing is as sweet as a soul kiss It's a half-time job and uh, it's quite a commitment to, to, to line it up and, and keep all the pieces in order. Sooner or later, I'll get sick. Um, everybody, when they get old, almost everybody, when they get old, has at least periods of, of incapacitation. Then I don't know what's going to happen with the show. Uh, I don't have an understudy. Um, I'd like to, um, but I need somebody who, who's both interested and compatible, and so far that hasn't happened. I don't know uh, anyone who would fill that role, and I don't see how it continues without that. Please join me in welcoming to the first of three sets from Buffalo, the Canal Street String Band. folk audience is getting older. Um, there's a younger folk audience coming along and we're starting to see uh, some young people at the show that we hadn't seen for quite a while. Um, there's a missed generation in the middle and uh, that's a problem. Uh, most of our performers are kind of older, most of our listeners are kind of older, and then Younger, and, and what fills in that gap? So there's, there's an open question as to whether the younger people that are starting to get involved in folk music will step up to the plate and organize the concert series and the shows and everything that goes along with keeping folk music alive. To me, it's just a great loss to the general folk community of our country to, to lose the Bound for Glory show. Because uh, I just think I think the tradition should go on. I would encourage any young person who wants to grab a hold of the reins or a group of people to to try to get in there and do it. You know, if I could uh, influence people to donate to it, I would uh, to keep this the folk tradition alive. I think it's. Uh, important that we have these kind of things that people have a uh, connection to their roots. You know, when I listen to folk music, I always get an image or some history. You know, that's where I identify with history. Well, there's always history behind these songs. And if you appreciate your history and your roots, there's always music that's connected to that. And, and I think it's all interconnected in terms of our culture and what we value. It is a whole thing of what do you choose to do with your life? I was a corporate executive and dropped out and became a broom maker. And Phil does that. The work that he does makes the world a little better place. I can't say I ever intended to spend my life doing radio. And for years and years, I figured that this was something I was doing while I figured out what I was going to do next. Eventually, I realize that this is what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm here, I'm retirement age, but I haven't left yet. 
I have come to hear the beat of an almost silent sound, like a clock that's winding low as its hands go round and round. And I have come to know the music in the rush of whispering wings. It's a song of quiet passing and the sound of everything. So build me up a fire, take me by the hand. And I will dance like no tomorrow to a light and lively band. Go stepping to the stars, go spinning in the air, as if I never felt a shadow or I never had a care. For every closing of a day, there is a rising of the sun. For every race that comes to end, there is another to be run. For every bird that goes to land, there is another taking flight. And for every dark and stormy place, there is another filled with light. So when all the music's done, and the time is at an end, then I will turn into the morning, take the trail around the bend. Walk the winding way, ride the rising road, and if I come to need an angel, one will be there for me, I know. So when all the music's done, and the time is at an end,